Marvel Studios is showing no signs of slowing down with their current plans to progress through the multiverse saga despite clear inconsistencies and favorability amongst fans. In the five years since Avengers Endgame, several key mechanics of the multiverse and how it works in the Marvel Cinematic Universe have been revealed. This video will be your guide to understanding how the MCU multiverse works and clear the air on any confusion that you may have. Let's get started. Now there are four mechanics that I think are important for all Marvel moviegoers to know and understand. The Sacred Timeline, Absolute points, anchor beans, and SNDF, or same name, different face. I'll put timestamps to each of these mechanics so you can scroll or rewind to certain points in the video to better understand one if it doesn't click right away. First, the sacred timeline. To put it simply, this is what you and I know as the main story where Nick Fury recruits the original six Avengers to Ultron destroying Sokovia, to Thanos killing Loki, wiping out half the universe, to Scott Lang discovering the possibility of time travel, to Tony Stark sacrificing himself. In the first season of Loki that they discovered described as the sacred timeline and this is exactly that. If you're a comic book reader, the sacred timeline is equivalent to Earth 616. This is easily the most important thing to understand as the sacred timeline is the baseline for how all the other universes exist. In other words, every universe that is not the main timeline has branched off of the sacred timeline at some point. Let me explain that. We know that Ultron is stopped by the Avengers where they blew up Sokovia. However, we've seen two alternate realities of this event. First, in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, we see the reality where the Ultron program went right and didn't try to force humanity into extinction. This reality is a branch off of the Sacred Timeline. The other reality is that what we saw in What If Season 1 was the complete opposite where Ultron got everything he wanted and it went terribly wrong with getting an organic body and collecting the Infinity Stones to destroy all life in his universe. This is also a branch off of the Sacred Timeline. Now, what are these specific moments in the sacred timeline called where things go differently? That brings us to the second mechanic absolute points. These represent the moments in the sacred timeline where something goes different than the main story and creates that branch timeline. With Ultron acquiring the infinity stones, the absolute point would be him fully transferring his consciousness into the vision instead of the Avengers stopping him and taking vision to create themselves. If this still doesn't make sense, let's talk about our own reality apart from the Marvel Universe. We all know the history of the world where there were two world wars and who won. Now an example of an absolute point would be that Normandy did not go the way of the allied powers and eventually led to the Axis powers winning World War II. Another example of an absolute point would be in US history where JFK was never assassinated. These absolute points would then lead to the different branches and creations of new universes where that reality is completely different than our own. A simpler way to think of an absolute point is a moment in time where there are multiple outcomes to a single scenario. For instance, say you had to make a choice of which seat you're going to sit on when you got on a bus. In the sacred time line you chose to sit in the front row but in a branch timeline at the absolute point you chose to sit in the back of the bus hopefully at least one of these scenarios helps you understand absolute points and how they lead to alternate realities now moving on to the third mechanic anchor beans this is where the world of marvel is really really going to come into play to make sure you understand the whole sacred timeline and absolute points before you jump into understanding anchor beans so we know absolute points are the moments in time where things go different than the sacred timeline but per marvel and what we saw in deadpool and wolverine where this mechanic was introduced is that these branch timelines need some sort of life force to allow the universe to survive. Instead of it being some cosmic energy source, it comes down to one person known as the anchor beam. To put it simply, if the anchor beam of a universe dies, then that universe slowly begins to die. I'll jump back to the comic book readers here in a second as I'm sure this sounds familiar and maybe this will clear things up for some of you as well if you are confused with anchor beams. In the comics, there is a super powered individual known as Molecule Man in the Marvel Comics multiverse, every universe had a Molecule Man, where he essentially was a bomb where if a universe's Molecule Man died, that universe would instantly be destroyed. This leads to a whole other talking point about how the creators of the Marvel Universe, the Beyonders, wanted to use the different universes to experiment, and whenever they were done with their experiment, they would kill the Molecule Man in that universe to destroy it. If you want to know more about the Beyonders and how they could play a role in the MCU, let me know in the comment section down below. To put it simply, the 
Anchor Beans are the MCU's adaptation of Molecule Man. This way, it is not the same person that keeps the universe alive and can be different characters like Wolverine or Spider-Man or Iron Man. The other thing that leaves me confused is that even with an Anchor Bean dead, there is still a way to keep a universe alive and healthy as we saw again in Deadpool and Wolverine. There's definitely a plot hole there that I don't understand and hopefully Marvel addresses at some point in the future with how exactly Deadpool's universe is now healthy even after his Wolverine died and that Wolverine was the anchor bean. And the fourth and final mechanic is a rather simple one for you to understand if you've seen Spider-Man No Way Home. This mechanic is same name, different face. In short, someone with the same name can exist in multiple, if not every alternate universe, but can look completely different. Take the Spider-Man for, for instance. In the sacred timeline, Tom Holland is the face of Spider-Man, but in at least two other different realities, Peter Parker is Andrew Garfield and looks like Andrew Garfield, and Peter Parker looks like Tobey Maguire. Now, this also works a bit different as well with a popular theory for Doctor Doom. Ever since it was announced that Robert Downey Jr. would be coming back as Victor Von Doom, this further confirms the mechanic's existence and its opposite. Someone can have the same face, but a completely different name. Easily put, RDJ is known as our beloved Tony Stark, but his face will now also be associated with Victor Von Doom. If you were to take away anything from this video, just make sure you know that the multiverse is truly an infinitude of possibilities. Any alteration in the Marvel movies or comics that you envision is its own reality in the Marvel multiverse. If you have any more questions or areas of confusion with how the Marvel multiverse works, please post them in the comment section down below and I will do my best to address them and answer them as quickly and as best as possible. I've always been a fan of the Marvel comics and movies and want to help as many fans as possible understand what Marvel is trying to do with this multiverse saga. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more Marvel videos. Until then, have a great rest of your day, wherever you may be.